Hi there, I am Live to Surf, aka Presley. And so basically today I'm going to do a video on all of the Goosebumps books and just say what I think about them. So let's start off with the first book in the series, obviously. Welcome to Dead House. This book was, um, it's a classic Goosebumps and it was published. It came out in July 1992. And it has 122 pages. I'm getting all of this from some site. Okay, so back to the chase. So, Welcome to Dead House is a pretty good book. I would put it in maybe my top, my topish kind of books. And because it was really good. I mean, the episode was the first episode, Goosebumps episode I ever saw. And I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to make these too long. Okay, so let's move on to the second book in the series. Stay Out of the Basement. So this book was also published in July 1992. 1992. And so it is also a classic Goosebumps. And that's also 122 pages. But this book is going to be definitely in my top 10. Because this book is amazing. And I love this book. Comment down below if you want me to do a top 10 Goosebumps video. I'm probably right. I love doing top 10s. So, um, I love that book. Monster Blood. So, I really liked Monster Blood, and it actually scared me. I was in third grade, come on. And then, so, it actually scared me a little bit. But then, um, I've read it so many times to where it's actually boring now. Maybe not boring, but I already know everything about it. So, this book was the third book in the series, and it came out September 1992, and it's in the classic Goosebumps series. It's one of the classic Goosebumps, and it has 128 pages. Moving on to the fourth book in the series, Say Cheese and Die. It was published on November 1992, and it's a classic Goosebumps. All of them are classic Goosebumps. Eh, never mind. So, I, re I didn't really like this book. I mean, the concept is great. I mean, that the idea of a camera that comes to life, not comes to life, but a camera that does all that stuff, that's a pretty good plot, but he could have made it a little better. Sorry. Alright, so moving on to the fifth book in the series, um, that is The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, and it came out on January 1993, and it has 132 pages. I actually really like this book, but, um, I also like the second and the first book book, the first book, because there's two books in this series. The, the Return of the Mummy is something like that. Is like the the second book in the series. Of like the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Kind of like that. But I like them both the same. Okay, number six in the Goosebumps series is Let's Get Invisible. It was published on March 1993 and I loved this book. Well, I haven't read the book yet. I've only seen the episode. But the episode looks amazing and I read the reviews and... Sounds really good. It was published on um, March 1993, and it has 139 pages. Moving on to the second, the, se the seventh book in the series. We're going to have a long video because there's a lot of goosebumps. I might cut up this video. Probably not. So, um, the seventh book in the series, Night of the Living Dummy, was published in May 1993, and it has 134 pages. I didn't, I don't really like the, um... The books and the episodes where it's about Slappy. I know most people like those books and they're, they're the classic Goosebumps where everyone loves these, but I'm not a real big fan of them. Number eight, The Girl Who Cried Monster came out in May 1993 and it has 137 pages. This book also, I kind of liked. I like the concept and stuff like that. It's a great takeoff of The Boy Who Cried Wolf, but it's not really my favorite book. Welcome to Camp Nightmare, the ninth book in the series, July 1993, and 136 pages. This book was amazing. I love this book. One second, I have it over here somewhere. I'll just take my Goosebumps collection. I'll move it over here. Nope, nope, one second. We're all falling. So, sorry, if you hear any bleeping, that's kind of my Skype. And so... I have this book, Welcome, see, here we go, 
Welcome to Camp Nightmare, and I love this book. I got it for my birth. Wait, I got it for Christmas two years ago, and wait, it was one and a half years ago, and it was really good. I loved this book, and I thought it was really amazing. So that's gonna be my top ten definitely. The next book, number ten, this one's series, The Ghost Next Door, August 1993, 124 pages. The Ghost Next Door had a really good story, and I also really loved it, but it was just, it was kind of scary, actually, but I don't get scared easily, and it was kind of scary for other people, but I really loved this book, and the episode was amazing as well, but it wouldn't be my top ten list, though. So, number 11 in the Goosebump series, The Haunted Mask. This is really hard to say. Everyone loves The Haunted Mask. Everyone loves The Haunted Mask and all those Haunted Mask episodes and stuff like that. But I hate them. I hate them. I just didn't like them. The story is good. The plot is good. But I just didn't like the book or the episode. You're going to hate me for saying that. I'm going to get a lot of unsubscribers. Okay, so the next book in the series I have on my nook, number 12, Be Careful What You Wish For, August, I mean October 1993, 128 pages. Why do I keep saying all that? That's boring. But Be Careful What You Wish For, it had a nice concept of three wishes, but why is it three wishes? It could have been creative. If I ever write a book like that, I'm going to make it four wishes, or two wishes, and be like, so I have three wishes, right? No, you have like four. Oh, that's so cool. Because it's always three wishes. But I didn't exactly like this book. This book might be my top 30, 40, 50-ish. Because I didn't enjoy this book so much, but I thought it had a okay story. Number 13. Piano Lessons Can Be Murder, November 1993, 124 pages. Let me see. Um, amazing. One word for it, probably my top 20-ish. Amazing book. I loved it. Well, actually, I actually haven't read the book yet. I saw the episode, because I don't have the book yet. But I thought this book was amazing. It was so good. I might buy it on my Nook later. <coughs> oh, come on. It's the stupid bleeding of my watch that's kind of broken. And it always goes off at this time. So let's just try and ignore it. Okay, so, um, the next book in the series... I think that the piano, wait, I gotta continue. Set the Piano Lessons had, <coughs> Can Be Murder, had a really good story, and I thought it was amazing. And kind of weird. So, number 14, I have this book, and it is The Werewolf of Beaver Swamp. Okay, so this book came out on December 1993, and has 100, 1, 2, 3, 123 pages. I thought this book was okay, but it's not my favorite werewolf story in the world. Like, I, I loved werewolf skin so much. Werewolf Skin is definitely my favorite werewolf book ever. And the episode was also amazing. So, moving on. So, the next book in the series is You Can't Scare Me, number 15 in the Goosebumps series. Um, January 1994, 120 pages. This book was okay, and I thought the story was amazing, very creative, but... It's also probably maybe my top 30-ish, 40-ish, because I didn't really enjoy it. I mean, I can like a story, but I can like the plot, but just not like the story. Okay, so the next book in the series is One Day at Horrorland. Now, this one is definitely a classic Goosebumps, and everyone loves this book. It came out on February 1994, and it um, has 123 pages. I thought that this book was amazing. This book was very creative and cool. I'm going to do this video up to number 20 in the Goosebumps series because it's kind of like this video is going to be really long. But One Day at Horrorland had an amazing story and I really like the concept. But I also, I just really love the story as well. And the episode was good as too. It didn't make really sense. They get to win a car. The next book of the series, I have this book and I got it for Christmas two years ago, but Why Am I Afraid of Bees? So this book came out on March 1994 and has 117 pages. I really enjoyed this book and 
Um, well, I enjoyed most of the Goosebumps series, but that book was pretty good, and I really enjoyed it, and it had a lot of fun characters, and it had a lot of creativity. Moving on to the second book in the series, I mean the 18th book in the series, Monster Blood 2, April 1994. 121 pages. Unfortunately, I cannot do a review on this one because... Number one, there isn't an episode, and number two, I haven't read the book yet, so I don't even know what it's about. All I know is that it has to do with the hamster and some monster blood and stuff. But I can't do a review on this one until I figure out, you know, what this book is about, and read it or watch the episode. Okay. Number 19 in the Goosebumps series is Deep Trouble, and that came out in May 1994, and 117 pages. This bo book is going to definitely be in a classic Goosebumps series because I love this book and everyone loves this book and he didn't even have to make a second book to make it great. Um, Deep Trouble was perfect the way it was and I think a lot of people enjoyed it, the same as me. I got a little annoyed with it because I read it too many times, but other than that, I thought the story was amazing and I loved this book. Let's move on to the last book I'm going to review, number 20. The Scarecrow Walks at Midnight. New cover. I have a new cover. This book came out on 9 May 1994, and it is um, on it has 122 pages, and I really like this book, but I think he could have made the story a little better. But the episode was very great, too, and it had a nice concept, but also the episode was just amazing, and I loved this book as well, just not as much as some other books. It might be my top, like, 30 or 20. Ah. So that has been the first top 20 Goosebumps episodes. Leave a comment down below on what other videos you want me to do. And uh, other stuff, I guess. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you watch my other videos, subscribe, and like this video. Thank you.